Hey, what's up, guys? This is Chung here again. So this time, uh, 1,912 design movie rental system. Uh, yeah, I will upvote this one as well. So this time, you know, the hard one is like is a system design. It's a design problem type. It's not like algorithm one. It's not algorithm algorithm one or data structure one. This one is like more like a design. So basically, this time we need to design a movie renting company system that's uh, consisting of n shops, right? I know the description is pretty long. I probably won't go over each bit of piece of details. Basically, I'm just going to, going through this one uh, in the high level. Basically, uh, you can you guys can read uh, through the details. Basically, we have like a movie rental system where we have a bunch of shops and each shop can own some movies, right? And but each movie each shop can own, only own one copy of of each movie. And then we have we, we need to define like supports uh, APIs. So we have a search, rent, drop, and report. So rent and drop are, pre are pretty straightforward. Basically, given like a shop and movie, we rent it, right? And then we drop, it, which means we are gonna re going to return it. And then we have like two uh, query functions. The first one is search. So the first search means that we're gonna uh, return the the cheapest the cheapest five shops that have an unrent unrented copy of a movie. So which means that you know we for search. We need a movie as a parameter, right? Based on the movie, you know, we're gonna have like a list of shops, right? That can that currently have the unrented copy of it, and then among all of them, we just need to re we need to return the top five cheapest one, right? And if there's a tie, uh, the shop who has a smaller index will will win, right? So similar with report, but for report, this one is like a global cheapest five rented movie. Remember, so this one. That's why the report doesn't have any parameters because this one are the cheapest five rented. So keep in mind, it's not unrented. It has to be a, all, among all the rented movies. Uh, we need to find all the uh, the the cheapest top uh, five ones and possibly of the same movie ID, right? Because if two shop has the same, you know, multiple shops can have a, can have the copy of the same movies and some of them may have the a very cheap value for the same movie, right? And that's it, right? So, and I'm not going. I'm not going to go through the examples here. And so the constraints, right? I mean, we have ten to the power of five, and then like, and then each shop carries at most one copy of a movie, right? And then at most ten to the power of five costs, right? So this one, obviously, you know, the key, the key data structure we need. To use here is to like we have to somehow uh, have like sorted sorted movies right for for each movie and f for each movie and for the all rented movies right. So at the beginning, you know, I was thinking about binary. Oh, sorry, not binary. The the priority queue. Uh, basically, the priority queue is to like can give us uh, a log in time for to get the the, the smallest. Right, the smallest values, but the product, the issue with the priority queue is that you know for this uh, sy uh, system, not only we have rent, we also but we also have have drop. Right, so which means that you know, whenever we drop or we rent, you know, it's inevitably you know we need to somehow remove the value from the priority queue. Right, and in Python at least you know. The priority queue or the heap only support login operations on on push and pop. It does not support it does does not support login operation on delete or remove. Where because that will be going to be a, a O of n time complexity. So that's why you know uh, we cannot use it. You know, but I believe in Java there's you can use ordered map right. So ordered map I believe. It supports that you know uh, a login for both for all the actions. That's why you know for this one at the very beginning I was like you know hmm maybe I'll just do something like a lazy delete. You know <laughs> uh, I spend a lot of time trying to implement implement the lazy delete with a priority queue. Like you know whenever we're trying to remove like uh, a, a node from a priority queue or a heap, I don't actually 
remove it or delete it right away. Instead, I mark it. I mark it to be deleted. And then later on, I only remove it when when the uh, when that that uh, deleted one or the marked one, the marked one is on the top of of this uh, heap tree. That's when I will real I will actually really delete that that one so that you know. I can somehow avoid that, you know, log in, uh, off and a delete action or operation. But there, there's an issue, you know, because let's say we have, um, let, let's say we have a sorted, we have a priority queue. We have a priority queue for, for a rented movie, right? So this is going to be a rented movie one, right? We have rented movie one, then we have like uh, some numbers here, right? So let's, this one we use a priority queue. And we have some numbers here, right? And then if we ever, basically if, whenever we, we rent a movie, we push it into the priority queue. And whenever we drop a movie, we remove it from this queue, priority queue, right? But like I said, like I said, you know, if we, if we do a lazy a delete, instead of like actually remove it, I'm going to mark this one, let's say. We mark this one to be delete, okay, to be delete, and th this one also to be delete. But the issue is that you know whenever we're trying to get the top five, uh, top five uh, cheapest uh, movies from this list here, uh, you know we're gonna basically the, since the product here will only give us give us the guaranteeing the top the smallest. That's why we have to somehow pop this product queue, right, one one by one until we have five. But the, the problem is that let's say we have, you know, let's say the first one is okay, but let's say the next the next 10,000 one are all deleted, right? Then we have to somehow basically delete our, everything, pop everything, pop everything out so that we can get the, the next smallest one. Right, and then after that, probably we also need to insert them back, <laughs> so that we can. So we have a, like another, we have a, a, a correct state for the for the next uh, either rent or drop, right? That's why this this one is not gonna be a an issue for us. So that's why you know, um, yeah. Anyway, I spent quite some time trying to implement that, but it it I didn't it didn't work, you know. And then I, I realized that in Python there there is a, like a similar data structure uh, to a, like other map. It's called a sorted sorted con list, right? This is one of the the uh, one of data structure in the sorted container package. So where this one uh, we can get both the add and remove in log n time, and this one is sorted. So so that basically that's this in the end this is a Data structure we're going we're going to use, okay, and that's it. So and then we can start uh, coding. So if we after we choose after choosing the correct data structure, everything should be pretty straightforward. Uh, so since we are we need to support a search and report, right? So this one, this is the top the cheapest five shops. This is per movie. That's why for each of the movies we're gonna we need to return a sorted list right so to do that let me do some import do we have to do the import right now i'm not sure i think sorted container import sorted list right so here uh let's define this a sorted price shop okay you know since we need to sort right we have to i'm going to uh, store both the price and shop inside this list for a movie because you know once the, sh the price is a tie we need a shop as a secondary key right so this one uh, we're gonna have default uh, sorted list right where this one the key keys a movie right value is is a pair of price and shop And then we're gonna have like the uh, the global sorted uh, rented movies, right? 
this is going to be a simply a sorted list in this case, right? Okay, cool. And then for s, uh, m, right? And then we're gonna initialize initialize that shop, movie, and price in entries. So self dot sorted price shop the movies gonna do an add right and the price and the shop okay same thing for the sorted movies rented movies we simply just uh, uh oh no for for this one there 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 won't be anything at at the moment because we don't we don't we haven't run anything. So let's implement the rent first, right? So this one, uh, we have a price. Uh, we need a price here. I see. So whenever we uh, insert this, whenever we do a rent here, you know, uh, so this one is going to be the uh, it's going to be the price, price shop, and the movie. Right. Because I need both of them, all of them. Price shop to sort it and movies. So it's the one of the it's one of the uh, value we need to return uh, in this report. That's why I I put all three inside this sorted. So here, which means we need we need the price from the shop and, and movie, and we can have like uh, a dictionary for shop movie to price. Right, that's gonna be dictionary we're gonna ma maintain. So that we can use uh, the shop and movie to find the price. Int right. So self dot this one. So the key will be so this one. The keys like keys the shop movie right value is price. Right. So that's why we have this uh, shop and movie, and the value is a price. Okay, cool. So here we can just have a price. It's gonna be the self dot shop movie, and then we use shop and movie to find it. Right. So once once we rent it, what do we do? We simply remove it from the from the from the uh, the, uh, the sorted shop uh, price shop list, and then we add it into the the rented movie list, uh, uh, vice versa for the job, right? So we have sorted uh, price shop for movie. Did I? This is gonna be movie, right? So this one we remove, remove the price and the shop, okay? And then we add it to the sorted movie sorted renting movie right uh, we add okay so the, here we have price shop and movie okay so similarly for for price we simply just re need to reverse them so this time we uh, we remove uh, oh this one is add right so once dropped we add it back to this one, and then here we remove. Simply just re uh, reverse the remove, remove and add. And now for the sort of search, obviously, we just need to f get the top five from this uh, sorted price shop list, right? So we have a shop thing dot uh, shop in self dot sorted. Uh, this one, right? Then we have a movie that's the key and then we, we need to get the top five right because they're sorted and then right so this one just shop for this right that's it right similarly for the report right we need to return the top one top five from i guess i'll just copy this template since they're pretty much the same so this one we have the sorted movie uh, sorted rented movie. Okay, this one does not need this. And then we have shop and movie, right? To return. So 
this one is sharp and the movie and that's it right um yeah i think that's it so if i run the code this one should work oh sorry not move movie All right, if I submit. Cool, so it passed, right? So as you guys can see, once we have, once we find the, the proper data structure, this this implementation is pretty straightforward, right? Just two uh, sorted list, right? And the, and the dictionary and the map for the, to map the price and Nothing special, okay. Uh, oh, and time complexity, right? I mean, I think time complexity is like, since the, all the calls is like O of, it's N, we have N calls in total, right? So here is like O of N, right? And for the search rent, you know, this one, you know, like I said, in a sorted container or sorted list in Python, so both the remove and add are log N. That's why, you know, the total time complexity is time complexity it's unlock in, in this case okay because here you know this five is it's like constant right uh cool i think that's it for this problem and thank you for watching this video guys and stay tuned see you guys soon bye bye